hi guys welcome today we will take a look at uh, serial communication and uh, we will take a look at uh, how we can uh, program the uout module uh, along with the easy dma this is the second part of the uout uh, which we have seen in the previous tutorial and uh, now today we will take a look at some of uh, the event driven functionality of uout port but before going to the details we need to see its internal structure so the advantages are the full duplex operation and that is uh, a full duplex operation is basically the transmission and receiving at the same time and uh, automatic hardware flow control because there is uh, some internal hardware which will take care of the hardware flow control so we don't have to manually toggle the bits for the hardware flow control and of course we can set the parity and uh, and the main feature of UART E module is the easy DMA which is basically the direct memory access which takes the data from the peripheral to the memory so we can easily copy that data and the processor is not needed in this time so we can achieve the high baud rate up to 1 Mbps and let's see uh, how its internal structure is so here you can see that UART has uh, some internal structure like this and uh, so in this structure you can see that we have a FIFO which is the RX FIFO and uh, it's connected with the easy DMA and we have uh, some buffer in the RAM so what happens is uh, whenever we receive the data in the RX uh, the DMA will copy this data to the RAM buffers and uh, it will tell us with the help of an event and then we can uh, read that data when that event occurs. Similarly, the DMA can easily copy the buffer from the RAM to the transmission side and uh, when it has transmitted the data, it's going to generate an event and we will see that event and we can perform some other tasks like uh, we know that the data has been transmitted so we can do something else. Uh, and uh, this is totally non-blocking. Uh, because it uses the interrupts and DMAs so the processor is not involved too much the processor only needs to start the DMA and uh, other than that the processor doesn't need to do anything else for the memory transfers so let's see how the DMA works so basically a DMA is an internal module and uh, it works alongside the processor and uh, you, we can say that the DMA is a master as well because uh, it can initiate the transfer procedures and uh, it can uh, transfer the data from RAM to the peripherals and from the peripherals to the RAM. The main advantage of DMA is that uh, the processor is free and we can carry out the data transmission and the processor is free and uh, the processor can perform something else while this data is being transmitted. Okay, for the basics this is enough and uh, let's see how we can program this and uh, it's really easy and uh, let's see how we can do this. Okay guys, let's see how we can program the UART and we will see how we can program it in the non-blocking mode. So first of all, we will create a new project. So let's start it by going into this PC and then go into the C directory. Here we have extracted over an RF SDK and uh, in this SDK we will go in the ex examples and uh, we will go into the peripheral. From here we are going to copy the UART and we will go back into my projects we have created this folder and it contains all the projects so we will paste it here and let's rename it open it and uh, if you are using uh, PCA if you are using NRF52840 you have to use this PCA10056 if you are using NRF52832 then you need PCA10040 so I'm using a NRF52832 so I will be opening this folder go into the blank open the SES folder and open this EM project file first of all I will remove some of the code let's remove everything and we will start from the scratch Okay, here you can see it's uh, telling if it's defining if UART is present and do this. Uh, it depends on the configuration, so we will see how we can configure that as well. Right now, just remove these lines and we're not going to include that. Just this is enough. Control plus S and okay, we are good to go. We have the base uh, program and uh, from here we will start uh, coding it. So 
first of all let's see what are the configurations for UART and uh, uh, to check the configurations go into the SDK config.h by right clicking on this and uh, then open the CMC's configuration wizard and uh, here in the drivers if you see the UART it's enabled and uh, you have to enable the legacy drivers as well so be sure the legacy drivers are enabled and they are included uh, in the file otherwise your project is not going to work or your files won't be compiled so let's save this and close this it's already configured so uh, first of all we are going to create a function which is going to initialize and configure the UART port for us so let's create that function so I have created an error code variable and now we will now we are going to define a structure which is going to hold all the values for the UART configuration and then we will pass that structure to a function which is going to initialize the UART for us so let's create that the first one would be the rx pin so we are just going to use the normal constants which are predefined in the header file if you want to use any other pin of course you can define them and uh, then you can pass these constants here now we have to pass it the flow control so I'm just going to disable the flow con control because I don't need it normally you don't need this for flow control if you are using a high baud rate then uh, you can enable the flow control now we will pass this configuration to a function but before doing that let's define the buffer size the next thing we need to do is we have to create an event handler and uh, and then we will use that event handler by passing it to the function which is going to initialize the UART now we are going to initialize the UART so okay so in this function the first parameter is the configuration uh, that we did here and we will pass the address to these configurations and the second thing is we need to pass the buffer uh, for the uh, we need to pass the size of the buffer for rx and uh, the size of the buffer for the tx and uh, then we have to pass the handler so here we have created this handler we will pass it here and uh, then we have to tell it the uh, uh, intro priority and uh, we have set it to the lowest uh, because we don't need a higher priority for this task you can change it according to your needs and uh, the last thing we need to pass it is that error code okay so the initialization is done and uh, the next thing is we need to handle the errors and also we have to handle the events so first of all let's create a variable which is going to hold the uh, characters which are passed over the UART now we will check the event type if uh, some error occurred during this communication this error is going to be passed and we can see that in the debugging mode also we need to see if there is a FIFO error so for that we have to create another condition so uh, once we receive a character of our UART port we are going to receive this event 
so we can handle some stuff in this one. Here we are just going to use a simple function to get this character and save it into a variable and then we will print this variable. Now to print it we will use a simple printf function. %c means the character, so it's just going to read this character and uh, print it out. And the last thing is we need to see if the data is transmitted or not. And uh, once the data is transmitted, we will receive this event, which is And here let's toggle an LED. So first of all, uh, we need to create some LEDs. And for that, let's define a pin. And in the main function, let's initialize the LED. So if the data is transmitted, the LED is going to get toggled. So every time I transmit some data, uh, it's going to toggle the LED. So it's going to be useful and uh, you can use these, uh, these events to handle some other stuff like I'm doing here. I'm just saving this into a character and then displaying that. Everything here is done and uh, the last thing we need to do is we have to call this function uautconfig. and we are good to go. So basically this is a non-blocking function and it's uh, automatically going to take care uh, of the transmission via easy DMA. Once the data transmission or receiving is done, we will receive these events and we can see what's happening. So let's build this code. Okay, the code is done and we have configured the UART, so we are just going to see it over the PC. So I have connected my UART uh, with the PC and uh, we are going to see it in the serial terminal. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to build it once again, let's see, and uh, then connect with the target. Make sure your device is connected and uh, erase all and download it. Once the code is downloaded, uh, you won't be able to see anything right now because uh, we have to use the terminal application to communicate with the UART. So I will minimize this and uh, I will open the serial terminal which is POTI and I will click on the serial and uh, right now I have to see uh, which port is connected. So I will right click on this PC, go into the properties and here in the device manager if we go here you can see it's connected with the COM port 7, so I'm just going to close this all. And I will mention I will mention COM 7 and 115200 is the baud rate. And let's open this. Okay. Now, uh, if I send any character, it's going to print that. So let's press K. And here you can see it has uh, transmitted this message. And uh, if I press any other character. It's going to show me another character which is U because I pressed the U button but here you can see it's not ending the line itself so to end the line let's put here the ending line sequence so save it build it connect with the target erase all and download it and once downloaded and let's reset the terminal as well because we don't want to see that so whenever I press a button for example this time I press O it, uh, it has transmitted this and uh, it has uh, now it's uh, on the second line and uh, if I press any other button it's going to go on the third line and it will print the key so whatever key I press it's going to print that and uh, here you can see it's uh, really useful and uh, we can uh, use this uh, serial communication with the non-blocking features uh, the main advantage of this communication is that our processor is free and uh, we can do a lot of stuff so i hope so you have learned something new today and uh, this code uh, along with some information is going to be 
available for download in the description of this video be sure to check it out and uh, if you are new to my channel please be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button if you like this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video